Hello, and welcome to the Wolf Den. So recently was uh, Comics Pro, which Pro stands for Professional Retail Organization, which I just found out. Or professional. Yeah. <laughs> um, it basically, from what I understand, it's a big gathering of um, people in the comics industry, publishers and retailers, get together and they just lay out like their strategy and just you know, talk about what's going on in the comics industry. At this event, uh, DC co-publisher Dan DiDio, everybody's favorite uh, punching bag at that company, um, basically laid out their strategy for the upcoming year. They've committed to doing more weekly series, um, for example, Batman Eternal and the New 52 Future's End, and how they're going to bring back... Um, the 3D covers that they debuted last year in September for Villains Month that were... Did anybody like those? They did because they made a lot of money for them. But did people bought them? People like, bought, people yeah, because... <laughs> well, people bought them because they put them out first. Uh -huh. And then they put out the, the regular versions. So they were so DC's cute. really the only one who likes them. And the only reason why everybody bought them is because that's what was put out first, basically. <laughs> I thought they were stupid. Yeah, they are pretty bad. Eric Stevenson who is the publisher of Image Comics, in his speech, basically said everything Dan DiDio said was stupid and dumb and wrong, and he's a butt face. Not so many words. <laughs> Actually, a lot more words. Without saying butt face. Without saying butt face. <laughs> it, his, he had a really long, long speech that I can't say all here. I'll link in the description. But basically what he's saying is that the common practices of the comics industry, relaunching series with a new number one periodically, like Marvel and DC have been doing, um, b big events that Marvel and DC are known to do, gimmick covers, like the 3D covers, licensed comics, um, and charging north of $8 for a single issue are things that, to him, are going to ruin the industry a lot quicker than they would help. And his whole proposal is basically we need to, by we I mean the comics industry, needs to focus more on pushing original content, better content, to break free of just the superhero genre, and basically do what Image has been doing for the past few years, which is really pushing um, creator-owned and focused content like Pretty Deadly, Velvet, Walking Dead, things like that. This led uh, Mike Richardson from Dark Horse and Ted Adams from IDW both companies who put out a lot of licensed books to basically say, F*** you, Eric Stevenson. We like putting out licensed books, and people like our licensed books. So this just, you know, this got me thinking, like, who's right, who's wrong? What should the comics industry be doing? What should they stop doing? Well, Dark Horse and IDW, that's all they make their money off of, are the licensed books. Dark Horse does have a lot of, um, because they do Hellboy. Yeah. They do, um, they do all of Gerard Way's comics, like Umbrella Academy and, um, yep. Phil Joy's. <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah, so it was really IDW is the one who needs to do more than just license yeah, they, work. Yeah, they're entirely licensed. Yeah, but, you know, they make good licensed stuff. Like, their Ninja Turtles run is fantastic, you know? I'm not opposed to it. Yeah, no, I'm no, just I, I'm just, yeah, no, I know, I know what you're saying, but, I mean, it just felt like this is, um... This is something worth mentioning, because I don't know if you people know this or not, but the reason why you you hear so much about comics is because the people who like comics are very loud about it. <laughs> the comics industry is not very <laughs> lucrative, basically. If this cover of this notebook was the entertainment industry, comics would be maybe about two stars across this whole... Spacey backgrounds. There are stars on. on there are, the, yeah, on I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> and even though the two biggest comic companies are owned by Warner Brothers and Disney, you know, they're still not treated at the same level as like everything else in those companies. Image is really mad that uh, DC and all the and Marvel and the big names are keep relaunching stuff and doing all this ass backwards. <laughs> but like, DC and Marvel can do that because people are always going to read DC and Marvel. Right. It's not like anybody's ever gonna... It's not like there's gonna be a mass boycott of D DC and Marvel, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just trying to be the, the 
the, the good guy underdog here, but um, they've never really relaunched anything. They relaunched Spawn, I think, didn't they? No, no, no they never didn't. relaunched Spawn. No, no. never mind. Yeah, so, I mean, Im Image... I guess they have their own, like, uh, like standards. Because everything Image does is creator-owned. It's based on what the, the creator wants to do. So if Todd McFarlane ever says, I'm going to relaunch Spawn with a new number one, then they'll do that. But Tom McFarlane doesn't want to do that. Yeah. One of the big things he said was that, you know, licensed comics aren't the real thing. Like, Transformers comics aren't real Transformers. Uh, Star Wars comics aren't real Star Wars. Um, to which Ted Adams of IDW... Oh, come on. The new Star Wars is awesome. I know, right? the new Star Wars is amazing. Yeah. But uh, Ted Adams from IDW retorts with, My Little Pony has brought tens of thousands of new readers to comic shops. My Little Pony that, that people. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> people <laughs> love that. A lot of what Eric Stevenson was saying was comparing the comics industry to the music industry. How, like, the music industry wasn't prepared for things like digital or anything like that, and they just kept repackaging the same CDs over and over again and putting out expensive box sets. And the only people who were buying those expensive box sets were typically the people who already bought this, the CDs to begin with. Mm -hmm. And it was just this cycle basically the snake eating its own tail until finally there's nothing left for the snake to eat would you say that the uh comics industry is ready for digital the comics industry has been ready for digital they've d probably they've been gone... gearing up in the right way yeah i mean there's there are still some holdouts like mark millar has just recently decided that maybe going day and date with digital is a good idea because he used to you know hold back three months it's definitely a good idea yeah um pretty much every publisher now is on Comicsology, except for Dark Horse, but at least they do their own, have their own digital service. Comics people are nasty. They really are. I've never seen an industry that's so nasty with, with, it's, with each other. It's so weird because, like, on the one hand, like, the writers and the artists and, like, all those people, they all generally seem to be friends. <laughs> but, like, when you get, like, higher up, like, that's when, like, the real nasty mudslinging starts. Yeah. Especially, especially like, this is the nastiest it's been in a while. Something that uh, Eric Stevenson was really pushing was new content. Like, you can't just have the same superheroes over and over again. Like, that's fine, but to help the comics industry thr thrive, um, you need to bring in new readers with new books, especially female readers, because that's, that's, like, you know, the holy grail of comics is trying to get girls to read. Yeah. You know, and just having a Rule 63 uh, Superman is not going to cut it. You know, you need books that they'll actually read. And he lists, you know, uh, Saga, Pretty Deadly, Rocket Girl, uh, Rat Queens, Rachel Rising, which Image doesn't even publish. You know, all, all those books. He lists Sex Criminals for some reason. I mean, you do see Penis in it. <laughs> I guess a woman I would see read. a trend here. I see a lot of sex... Uh, pretty. I see girl. Or queen. Yeah. Can't they just read regular comics? <laughs> Why does it have to be like, I don't know. like, like, well, like thrown in their face? Well, this is, this is like, you know, whenever they make a toy and like the girl version is the same toy but colored pink. Yeah. You know, they, they can't just like the same toy. It has to be colored pink. A lot of girls that I know that are into nerdy things, they enjoy the male version of everything. Yeah. And like like if if I'm gonna play Mario with one of them, they they can't be Peach. No, yeah. because like they that's that's, that's, that's degrading. <laughs> yeah, it's degrading. <laughs> yeah. But um, every woman I know who reads comics loves fables. I don't know why, but as far as I know, that's not specifically geared towards women. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, I, like, don't try too hard to gear it towards yeah. a woman. You know, still make it. Mm -hmm. Like The Last of Us. It's a video game. Yeah. Uh, not geared towards women at all, but I think women would enjoy it. There's yeah. a strong female character in there, but it's very uh, testosterone-driven. Yeah. <laughs> he says, The biggest problem with comic books is that even now, even after all the amazing progress we've made as an industry over the last 20 years, excuse me, the, excuse. <laughs> the vast majority of people have no idea whatsoever about how much the comics medium has to offer. As it's true. It, as an industry, we still cling to this short-sighted and mistaken notion that presenting ourselves to the world as Marvel and DC, as superhero movies, is the key to reaching a wider audience, and it's just not. People know what Spider-Man is, people know what Superman is, they know Batman, they know the X-Men, and you know what? 
they've already made their mind up about that stuff, and that's why the success of those movies has yet to translate into an avalanche of readers into our industry. Well, that's not their goal when they're making comic book movies. Their goal is to rake in as much money as they can, yeah. and that's the easiest way for them to rake in as much money right. as they can with little uh, risk. But at the same time, I see what he's saying, because just because the Avengers made a billion dollars doesn't mean people are running to comic stores to read more about the Avengers. Right. If anything, they're they're just waiting for the next Avengers movie to come out. They're not even going to bother, you know, with comics. Like Age of Ultron, people aren't people aren't going to go rush and read all all up on Ultron. Right. You know, just because they saw the first movie. You know, comic book movies rarely if ever lead to people actually going to a comic book store. Right, he's right, but yeah. again, that's not their goal. That's not their goal, but you would think... It's to make money. You would think, especially now that Marvel, that Disney owns Marvel, and Disney is putting out the Marvel movies, that they would help the other end of their business by, you know, saying, Hey, if you like Thor, you should read these books. Or, when Captain America comes out, Hey, you think this Winter Soldier thing is interesting? Here's the first issue of that comics run. If you want more, go here. Right now, the trend in entertainment, it's been for a while, is make a book or comic book of an intellectual property. Yeah. Get it started. See if people like it. If people like it, make a video game or a movie on it. Right. Or a TV show. If that does well, make a hell of a lot more. Right. They don't care about the comic book anymore. They ditch the comic book or, or, or novel. Yeah. And they run with the movie because the movie makes them a lot more money. Right. And that, you know, but that's a problem because then that all, that's going to lead to less and less people working in the comics industry. Right. And it just gets smaller and smaller until then there's no comics industry. Spider-Man number one, that's a relaunch that I think is absolutely necessary. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's say it wasn't Spider-Man number one. Let's, I'll replace that with Daredevil number one because that's coming out that's next totally month. That's totally unnecessary. That's totally unnecessary because it's the same creative team. They're just moving Daredevil from New York to San Francisco. I've said this before. Um, number ones are good because they bring in new readers so that new readers know that they can just jump on. Because it's hard when reading comics right. to know when to jump on reading a book. But the alternative to that is to have an arc. Yeah. And say one of five. And then when you right. see a four of five, you know, I'm not going to read this because I need to read the other three. Or I'm going to wait for the trade. Yeah. But the, but the thing is, a lot of times when that happens... Like, this was a big thing when they did the New 52. It wasn't so much that they brought in new readers. They brought in a lot of old readers and, like, the same readers. And, like, they were, they were the ones buying it. They didn't necessarily bring in anybody new. They brought in people who were already reading comics at the time. Right. Or had read comics previously and are jumping in again. They, they just... Especially DC, they like to do the charade. Ah, we're doing this now! Yeah. Everybody like this! <laughs> I'm going to stop yelling now. And then they release whatever it is. Yeah. And then they wait a couple of months when that starts to not be such a gimmick anymore. And then they go, ah, we're doing something. Yeah. Everybody buy this. And we'll stop pushing it while you're buying this. And yeah. then they, a couple months goes by and then they just keep doing it over and over yeah. again. So what do you guys think? How would you, or what do you think the comics industry should do? How should it move forward for the future in this day and age yes with movies video games and all this other entertainment stuff youtube videos creeping in on the com the old the old uh outdated comic book yeah. medium how do we save the funny pages yes leave it in the comments below add us on twitter like us on facebook like this video if you like it. Subscribe oh, yes. if you really like it. Thank you very much. Have a good week. I'm gonna have another zebra cake. You see that? That's a smile. The CW gets Barry Allen. Who knew? So I'm here to prove that us Americans are perfectly capable of playing this game. I'm playing this game for America.